This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Mnow Biscuits. Person claiming insurance fraudulently caught. A New Guinea Ice Global Aerospace Company as Fleet Solution. And UOG to develop staff as part of new reforms. A very good evening. You're watching National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. Motor vehicle insurance for the first time caught a person who was claiming for third party insurance. This was a first of its kind for the organization to catch a fraudulent person. This was presented in a media briefing by the Chief Executive Officer for MVIL, Michael Markup, in Port Mosby this morning. The offender was caught by an internal investigation by MVIL together with other relevant authorities. The court has found out that the offender has presented false documents to MVIL for the purpose of claiming third-party insurance. And the courts have found that the documents that were presented were fraud, and so the person who was involved has actually been working with stakeholders, other people involved in this fraudster as well, and uh, put the thing through our processes to get that money. Markup says this was a result of the implementation of the improved claims processes and rigorous screening of claims application in collaboration with the key stakeholders. Traffic police in particular, they really, really helped, and we brought out to light that this fraud star. And so the courts saw all the evidence and they charged this individual. I think you've read the, the story last week. It was on last week's uh, papers and I think TV as well. He has been sentenced to jail for two years. Now, that is, I must say, this is the first. It has never happened before in MVIL. I don't think, I'm, I'm, I may be wrong, but I think this is one of the biggest wins for us because we've invested a huge amount of money in our claims processes and systems and people and resources, and this is the result of what we see. The Chief Operations Officer for MVIL, Bafino Koi, further elaborated on the processes a person must follow to claim their insurance money after getting involved in a car accident. The accidents happening, the locations of accidents and uh, the necessary documents. Uh, the result of uh, detecting this uh, force happening because uh, unlike previously, you know, claims just come into Port Mosby and, you know, there's a lead time. Uh, it takes up to one or two months to just basically assess their basic documents. Uh, now is uh, we are actually advising as part of the change, we are advising claimants to just go into our centers. Uh, with all your documentations, and uh, we got claims officers who are there to basically talk to you in person. Annually, MVIL normally receives 10,000 claims from people. Previously, they used to collect 1,000 plus in a month, but with the new management, the filtration process has helped to reduce the numbers down to hundreds. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. And New Guinea, as part of its refleeting exercise, is progressing its review of available options to ensure the airline secures a competitive and sustainable solution for its PNG domestic and regional network. A global aerospace company headquartered in Brazil called Embraer have flown to PNG in the latest E195 E2 regional jet for a demonstration flight today. And New Guinea is looking to invest in replacing its aircrafts with the latest state-of-the-art technology, enhanced fuel efficiency and additional safety features to serve the domestic and regional network. On this note, Embraer was invited to Port Mosby for a demonstration flight to display what they have on offer. And New Guinea CEO Bruce Alabasta highlighted that this is a step forward. The Embraer is well known to this region. There's a solid presence in Air Caribas with Alliance Airlines in Australia 
Air North and Cobham, so it already has a solid footprint. And for Air New Guinea, this will be a quantum step forward as we get through this process. The Embraer is one of a number of aircraft in the regional jet category that we're looking at, and that process is ongoing. But it will be equivalent to Air New Guinea from when Air New Guinea moved from the turboprop Fokker Friendship to the F-28 jet aircraft. It is a quantum step forward. Embraer being the third largest aircraft manufacturer with a history of having designed, developed and manufactured 21 different types of aircraft is one option New Guinea is looking at. The Vice President of the Asia-Pacific Embraer Commercial Aviation, Raul Villaron, did a brief summary of what they have on offer. Lighter aircraft, so by being lighter, it has a lower fuel burn than the competitors by 10%. It has also lower uh, navigation cost. It has also lower maintenance cost because it's a lighter aircraft. So our competitor has the same engine, but it's a heavier aircraft. So it burns more, it needs more trust on the engine, right? So it increases the maintenance cost. The other thing is the, we are very competitive in terms of uh, the financial solution as well, and we uh, we also have uh, our Brazilian Development Bank supporting the transaction, which makes the the deal uh, very attractive. The E195 E2 is one of a number of aircraft options New Guinea is considering as a potential replacement for the Foca fleet. The 45 minutes demonstration flight carried New Guinea executives and staff, including the Civil Aviation Minister Walter Schnobelt. New Guinea is looking at long term fleet solutions, and Embraer is one of the options they have. It is a 53 year old aircraft manufacturing company. It did a demo flight today at the Port Mosby Jackson's International Airport. Florence John Duo, National MTV News. Orange Digital Marketing is a Brisbane-based website design and digital marketing agency that has now extended its services into Papua New Guinea with the support of Brian Bell Group of Companies. The extension of Orange Digital Marketing and Web Design eventuated today at the Hilton Hotel in Port Mosby. Chief Executive Officer of Orange Digital Marketing tells us what they aim to achieve in PNG in regards to online marketing strategies. Orange Digital is a marketing agency. We're a marketing agency that I guess do things a little bit different. We don't just do the traditional marketing such as you know, performance-based media, SEO. Our focus is predominantly on what we refer to as human-centered design. And that's about understanding who your end customer is and taking their requirements into account when you're running a design campaign, when you're doing a, 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 perform, a performance media campaign, or even building a new technology solution such as a, a website or an app. Case studies are normally conducted by the team to better understand different businesses. The same will apply to interested businesses within the country. Digital is going to be building our business from the ground up here in PNG. Now that means that we're going to be investing in people. As a business, we have a strong culture around our people and performance. And we want to invest in people to help lift their skills, to build a skill level in PNG that matches that to which we have in Australia. Chairman for Brian Bell Group, Ian Clough, explains the importance of establishing this agency in country. Papua New Guinea has a, a huge opportunity to grow its digital inclusion and as we do that, Papua New Guineans are going to demand better um, services through the digital um, platforms, whether it be new apps, whether it be new websites, whether it be new ways to interact with business. Businesses are going to have to keep up with that demand and across the world you see enormous appetite for um, apps and websites to drive e-commerce and other, other business activities. We're a retailer predominantly, we're a proud Papua New Guinean company. Brian Bell Group of Companies motivation behind supporting an Australian digital marketing agency in Papua New Guinea is meant to drive PNG businesses towards digital economy. Amanda Elaitia, National MTV News. 
to strengthen bilateral partnership between Papua New Guinea and, and Indonesia, the ambassador for Indonesia to Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands, Andreas, Andriana Supandi, has visited the Western Province. Vice Minister for Mining and Border Development and North Fly MP James Donald said both governments are continuing to work towards reviewing, realizing and jointly implementing agreements for mutual benefit of the people. Vice Minister for Mining and Border Development and North Fly MP, James Donald, is looking forward to change the district and western province to bilateral partnership with Indonesia. He made this known after welcoming and meeting the Ambassador for Indonesia to Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands, Andriana Supandi, in Kiunga yesterday. He said the Ambassador's visit marks a significant time in the history of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia in regards to border arrangements. We are recalling some 37 years ago where a treaty was signed between the two countries for mutual respect, friendship, cooperation, and because of that we have, we have enjoyed that thus far. The treaty was signed on the 27th of October 1986. We are also recalling another agreement between two countries on border arrangements, and that was also signed on the 18th of March 2003. The government of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, through both Minister for Foreign Affairs and Immigration of Papua New Guinea and the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, jointly signed the basic agreement between both countries on the 17th of June of 2013. The basic border arrangement between the two countries outlined border management framework that governs all border issues, including the management and proper administration of land border between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia going forward. The ambassador's visit to Western Province strengthened those agreements that were signed by both countries before. The Indonesian ambassador will be in the Western Province from the 20th to the 23rd of this month. Natasha Ovoy, National MTV News. A natural resources and economic seminar was held at the PNG National Research Institute to discuss on topics that relate to the country's natural resources and economy. During the seminar, the visiting professor to the University of Papua New Guinea, Professor Martin Davis, did a presentation on the economics of natural resources extraction. In his presentation, he highlighted the challenges faced in managing PNG's natural resources. One of the main challenges he highlighted was the Dutch disease. The resource sector, these resource projects, in themselves are really enclaves. They have very few linkages with the non-resource sector. You know, very, they employ a very small number of Papua New Guineans. They don't buy much from the rest of the economy. They don't interact with the non-resource sector in, in terms of buying. The economy has three sectors, which are the booming export sector, which includes the LNG, the lagging or traditional export sector like agriculture, and the non-traded goods sector. Professor Davis said when the country concentrates on the booming export sector, it undermines the other sectors. Bigger extractive exports tend to contract our traditional export sector, so we get a concentration of our exports in extractives, which means we become much more sensitive to changes in those prices. If we had a very diversified export sector, Professor Davies stated that one solution towards these challenges of the Dutch disease is to save all foreign reserves coming in from the extractive sector into a savings account like the Sovereign Wealth Fund. These resource windfalls, these large increases in revenue or large increases in resource exports, which brings in foreign exchange, what you should do is save them in a, in a Sovereign Wealth Fund offshore. So you, that, that channel, you break that channel. You don't actually bring the revenues in. You save them and then you, you have this ability to, to create also some intergenerational. Professor Davies said in order for other sectors to grow, the extractive sector must be regulated well by the government. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back to National MTV News. The University of Garoka is now looking at developing their own staff under their internal staff development program. Vice Chancellor for UOG Dr. Tang Waninga says they have been recruiting their own best students and then they train. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Chancellor. Dr. Waninga says with the internal staff development program that they have, it helps the staff grow from a tutor to a lecturer. The first process is they select the best performing student in the different programs that they offer at the university and build him or her up to be a lecturer. He further highlighted that this internal staff development program helps to cater for the number of centers that they have in the country. They have a total of 18 centers throughout the country and two in the other Pacific Highlands, which are Vanuatu and the Solomon Highlands. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. The Telecom Foundation Inc. continues to provide support to schools to enhance teaching and learning in schools. They are working closely with the National Literacy and Awareness Secretariat to deliver the much-needed help schools have. Telecom Foundation's philosophy is to transform lives of children throughout Papua New Guinea by promoting literacy through IT-enabled solutions. Living up to its philosophy, Telecom Foundation Inc. recently supported three schools, which are the Margarida High School in the Abao District of Central Province and the Maiwara and Ladava Primary Schools in Milne Province. We did a commitment uh, by seeing the needs like we have seen that the school, those two school, schools need uh, library books. And then uh, we have committed that we will support the schools with library books. We have a vision to, 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 to embark on as an organization. A vision is that uh, since the establishment of this organization, uh, the major programs program that has been running since the establishment of the organization in 2010 is providing clean IT uh, solutions to the schools. Telecom Foundation Inc. has a very effective partnership with the NLAS in providing the much needed help to schools which are identified during the annual National Literacy Week. Once we conduct our awareness programs yeah, through the National Literacy Week, uh, the Telecom Foundation Inc. Uh, they ride on that event. So once they come with us, uh, they observe and listen to people's speeches and uh, help us, help the uh, National Literacy and Awareness Secretariat uh, by way of uh, providing support. The needs of these three schools were identified during the National Literacy Week last year and commitments were made to help them. Emphasis was also placed on the remote area community hotspot for education learning or Rachel. And we went with the equipment, computer equipment of 25 tablets and there was an offline device called Rachel Plus which consists of 3 million plus information sitting on that device. Uh, for basically for the students and teachers to access the information there to enhance their learning. The NLA stands on the vision statement which states that the vision for literacy in Papua New Guinea is that education should not be perceived as a passport to a paid job, but must focus on the entire population to be liberated from ignorance so that they acquire cognitive and practical skills with positive attitudes to others for the purpose of becoming self-reliant and living useful lives in their societies. And that is what the Telecom Foundation Inc. and NLAS are doing. Florence John Duo, National MTV News. 
The Kumul Minerals Holdings Limited, or KMHL, today presented a check of 1 million kina to the PNG Kidney Foundation. This check presentation is the first part of a 3 million kina sponsorship package by the Kumul, Kumul Minerals. This 3 million kina payment to the PNG Kidney Foundation was agreed upon under the Charity Partnership Agreement, as signed recently on the 22nd of December 2022. On hand to receive the check was the CEO of Port Mosby General Hospital, Dr. Paki Molumi and his executive team. Professor Gena of Kumul Minerals explained that the state-owned company under its government-approved community and social obligations charter is obliged to fund projects that have the potential to impact and improve the lives of Papua New Guineans. Mainly available in Port Mosby. The next one is probably up in Mendy. But lifestyle disease is uh, popping up almost everywhere throughout Papua New Guinea because people's lifestyle has changed. And that's an having an impact on the life of our people. And it's good that we have uh, Kumul Minerals get partner with Kidney Foundation to roll out those uh, services to all to uh, our Papua New Guinea. Professor Gena further elaborated, saying Kumul Minerals recognizes that chronic kidney failure is a lifestyle disease which will continue to threaten lives of people. Hence, he believes this support will assist the Kidney Foundation in its programs moving into the future. CEO of the largest referral hospital in the country, the Port Mosby General Hospital, Dr. Paki Molumi thanked Kumul Minerals for the great financial help. Dr. Molumi emphasized the need for Papua New Guineans to eat healthy. Lifestyle changes is the key. What we eat, once we address that, uh, address our lifestyle, then we have addressed the problem because that is the source, that is the root cause. Yes, but uh, statistics have shown that it's difficult to do that. So we've got to provide a facility to, uh, to, to treat. This part check presentation of 1 million kina by KMHL will go towards the establishment of the Kidney Foundation Training School, as alluded to by Dr. Molumi. The Kidney Foundation is trying to build this training facility so that we train all our nurses, we train our doctors, we train the dialysis technicians, we accredite them through the university, give them appropriate certificates so that they can be trained properly to international standards and they can open up satellite dialysis units throughout the country that will keep these patients alive. They go through the screening program, and those who meet the requirements, criteria to have kidney transplant will move into PMGH and have the kidney transplant done. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. As we approach the second anniversary of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare, Prime Minister James Marape has paid tribute to the nation's founding father. In a press statement, Marape took the opportunity to remember the man whose death overwhelmingly affected Papua New Guineans and the architect of our independence as a sovereign nation. Sunday, February 26, 2023, is the second anniversary of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Samara's passing. Two years ago, his death was a national event that Papua New Guineans profoundly, through the length and breadth, mourned united as one as the international community watched and passed on their condolences. Two years on and Prime Minister James Marape took time out today to reflect on the nation's founding father. In a press statement, Marape said, and I quote, This country and its people, young and old, owe a debt of gratitude to Sir Michael, lest we forget. Our children will speak of him. Our institutions will remember him. People throughout the length and breadth of this country will discuss him in revered tones. End quote. Marape went on to state that we stand proud as a nation of a thousand tribes taking our place among everyone else in the world, believing in the promises laid before us and taking advantage of our endowments and blessings. As a mark of respect, the National Gazette Public Holiday will be observed this Friday to commemorate and pay respects to the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Samare. Papua New Guineans in the country will mark this day by reflecting on the 
achievements and memories of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Thomas Samari, the founding father of our nation. His legacy remains, lest we forget. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. A local spice maker in the autonomous region of Bougainville is appealing to the government and relevant stakeholders to help purchase a grinding machine to grind spices with. Donald Naha from Langono Village, Sorom in Selao constituency, said he desperately needs this grinding machine to help grind his spices such as turmeric, ginger, chili and cocoa beans. This is Donald Naha, the spice maker in the autonomous region of Bougainville. He has turned his hobby of making spices into a promising money-making business. His spices have attracted a lot of customers recently. However, he faces a slight problem. Naha says most of the spices he had prepared need to be pounded into fine particles. Unfortunately, he is unable to do so because he has no grinding machine. Naha makes spices such as chili and salt, ginger, turmeric, noni, lemongrass and mango buck. This also includes oil products such as pure coconut oil, turmeric coconut oil, noni coconut oil and mango buck coconut oil. He is slowly tapping into homemade snacks such as tapioca chips, coconut cookies and tapioca and ginger cookies, desiccated coconut and coconut powder. Naha is appealing to interested individuals or business houses to help support him in purchasing a grinding machine and an electric scraper. He says these two useful tools will greatly assist him in providing spices and other nutritious snacks all locally to the people of Bougainville and surrounding atolls. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. And now we take a look at the Nest Fund market report. The Kina closed and changed at 0.2840 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina was buying 0.2765 US dollars, 0.3999 Australian dollars, 0.2522 Euro, 36.88 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher, copper closed higher, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed higher. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. Moving to overseas news now and Australia strengthened security ties with Kiribati. Like. So what we've seen really, particularly since Labor took power, uh, is a real plugging of some of those gaps. So you've seen Labor, for example, or the, the, the new government, uh, sign a security pact with Vanuatu uh, in December last year. You've seen it now go into negotiations with Papua New Guinea uh, on uh, a similar sort of security pact. And then on top of that, uh, you've now got this agreement with Kiribati. Now, it's not the only thing that's driving this, but one of the main things is, of course, anxiety about China's influence and specifically China's influence in some of these countries, countries like Vanuatu, like Kiribati and of course uh, in Solomon Islands. Russia suspends participation in nuclear arms agreement. It was nearly two hours long. It was the first time he's given one of these State of the Union addresses since April 2021. So that means it's the first one he's given since he invaded Ukraine. And he didn't really have much new to announce. Um, he didn't announce, for example, any uh, more troop mo mobilizations in Russia. He couldn't, of course, announce any victories on the battlefield because there hasn't been many lately. Uh, but he did make this announcement about suspending Russia's participation in the New START nuclear weapons treaty. And this is the only treaty that places a cap 
on um, the deployment of strategic nuclear weapons uh, with both the US and Russia. And there are real concerns about this news. Um, Jens Stoltenberg, NATO Secretary General, um, made some comments this afternoon. He said that this decision has made the world a more dangerous place. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said it was irresponsible to suspend, par par um, suspend participation in this treaty. So that was probably the only announcement to come out of it. We did hear Vladimir Putin uh, reheat a number of his old tropes, um, particularly in relation to neo-Nazis being at the heart of the, what he called the, the regime in Kyiv. Uh, also, he was um, uh, throwing a lot of blame at the West. He was blaming uh, Ukraine and Western leaders for uh, the war in Ukraine, even though it was him who invaded uh, Ukraine just on a year ago. Here's what he had to say around that issue uh, at his State of the Union address. The threat was increasing with every day. The information we were receiving left no doubt that by February 2022, everything was prepared for the next bloody action in Donbass. I want to repeat, it was them who started the war, and we used, and are using, force to stop it. Rescue team searching for survivors after another quake. There seems no end to the agony. Today, fresh images of loss and grief. Millions of people, desperately trying to heal, have been traumatized again. For many, the first thought was protecting their families. They gathered up everything that was precious to them and ran. This volleyball court was set up as a relief centre after the first earthquake, and by yesterday it was almost deserted. But when people felt the ground shake under their feet again last night, they fled back here looking for a place of safety. <laughs> Felice and her sister are homeless now. Holding her nephews tight, she doesn't know what's next. <laughs> I'm concerned for our future. I'm afraid for our children. I don't want them to be orphans. Mentally, I'm upside down. I hope good things will happen. We are in a miserable situation, running here and there with so little belongings with us. In northwest Syria, Afra has already lost her parents and sisters. She was born in the rubble as her mother died, rescuers cutting the umbilical cord. Thousands of people offered to give her a new home. Now her aunt and uncle have adopted her to raise alongside their own baby daughter. She will lack for nothing. I'll never spare a penny raising her. She's as dear to me as my children are, even more. Cousins, now sisters, a final memory of the lost mother whose name she now bears. New Zealand communities remain isolated after severe storms hit the country. Various different logistical teams and operations teams working out of. There's about 100 staff on site here coordinating things like food and supply drops for communities which are still cut off. Now it is going to take an extremely long time, months if not years, to come back from this disaster. The scale of the destruction here but also across the North Island is huge. The Prime Minister Chris Hipkins has said the damage bill is going to be comparable uh, to the Christchurch earthquake. So just an enormous amount of work to do. There's still around uh, 10,000 homes without power. There's still around 1,000 people sleeping in evacuation centres. And there's around 400 kilometres of state highways that are being urgently worked on to try and reconnect some of those isolated communities. And there is, of course, the very urgent work happening of trying to contact the several thousand people still who've been listed as uncaught contactable and that's not even then looking at where, pe where people are going to rebuild and move back into homes which have been just extremely damaged and in some, time, in some cases destroyed by Cyclone Gabrielle which now passed through this area about a week ago. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Two
Sky Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. During a media conference today, the Trukai Industries Limited renewed its two-year sponsorship with Weightlifting Federation PNG with 60,000 kina. In accordance to the two-year sponsorship agreement between Trukai Industries Limited and Weightlifting Federation PNG, this year Trukai Industries Limited has revamped this partnership agreement by presenting a check of 60,000 kina to the Weightlifting Federation PNG. Marketing manager of Trukai Industries Limited, Marion Tom, highlighted on the two-year sponsorship that has been ongoing for the past 22 years. Uh, has been a sponsor, major sponsor for weightlifting for 23 years, um, this year being 23 years. And, um, you know, the, the partnership has been a, a very good one because of the results that we continue to see from um, weightlifting athletes such as Dikato and Moria Barrow, um, who have performed um, or participated at international sporting events, um, including the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Representing the Weightlifting Federation PNG was PNG national weightlifting icons Dika Toa and Moria Baru, who shared their experiences on how they have benefited from this program. And a great support um, in my career for this last 23 years. Um, you know, I'm um, even saying that they've been the sponsors for 23 years. Now I have been part of that sponsorship um, all throughout uh, this journey. So I am one of the um, athletes who has really benefited from their sponsorship. Toa also explained on the sacrifices that their families undergo in order for them to succeed in their sporting career. They have been our backbone. They have always supported us in our good and bad times, difficult and um, worse situations, they've always been there for us. So um, our families have supported us um, you know, with anything and they would be the first ones to get up. Other than this partnership, Trukai also sponsors individual weightlifters through incentives in cash and kind while they are away training or participating at international tournaments. For season 2023, the Weightlifting Federation PNG is fully booked with five upcoming international tournaments and qualifying events, including a national championship, to which the Federation is looking at making it an annual event. Lisa Puni, Trukai Sports. New training singlets were presented to the PRK Golf ISO 2023 club yesterday by their new sponsors, the Garamut Enterprises Limited. Garamut Enterprises Limited officially announced that they will be sponsoring the PRK Golf ISO franchise for the 2023 season of the National Rugby League competition. The occasion also observed the Garamut Enterprises Limited representative Norman Liu issuing the team with new training singlets. Meantime, over the weekend, the ESOs played two 40 minute trial matches at the Santos National Football Stadium. They faced the Hunters in the first match where they were held under the pump scoring no tries as the Hunters danced off with 20 points final Huta score. They also lost in their second clash against the NCD Port Mosby Vipers 14 points to 6. Lisa Puni, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports now, and David Warner ruled out of second test match with concussion. The veteran batter suffered concussion and a fractured elbow during Australia's loss in Delhi and will be returning home. Australia have, of course, already lost pace bowler Josh Hazelwood to an Achilles injury and Captain Pat Cummins has returned home briefly due to a family illness. He is due to head back to India for the third test, which begins on the 1st of March, though. Australia are yet to win a test in their tour of India so far. 
And in women's cricket, England sets two significant records at the Women's T20 World Cup. Their winning margin of 114 runs was the biggest in the tournament's history and came after they whacked five for 213 from their 20 overs. England's tally eclipsed host nation South Africa's three for 195 against Thailand in 2020 as the highest ever at a World Cup. Pakistan were completely outclassed and could only muster nine for 99 in response. England have finished unbeaten to top their group, like the Australian side, and they are on a crash course with the Aussies to meet in Monday morning's final. That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Now we take a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. In southern region, Port Mosby City, cloudy with thundery rain periods and a high chance of flash flooding areas. Daru, partly cloudy with frequent overnight showers and possible thunderstorms. Karama, partly cloudy with evening showers and possible thunderstorms. Alatau, partly cloudy with few afternoon evening showers and possible thunderstorms. Popondata, cloudy with afternoon evening thundery rain. In Momasa region, Lay City partly cloudy with few afternoon night showers. Medan cloudy with frequent afternoon evening showers. Wewek and Vani more cloudy with occasional afternoon night showers. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau cloudy and windy with afternoon night rain periods. Kavian cloudy and windy with afternoon night thundery rain periods. Kokopo and Rabal cloudy and windy with afternoon night thundery rain periods, Kimbe cloudy and windy with afternoon night thundery rain periods, Buka cloudy and windy with afternoon night thundery rain periods. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City cloudy with frequent afternoon night showers, Gorka and Kundiawa cloudy with frequent afternoon night showers, Mendi and Wabe cloudy with afternoon overnight thundery rain periods. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Before we go, we've just got news that just came in regarding the four hostages held captive. Police Commissioner David Manning has announced that one of the four people being held captive in the border region of Hela and Southern Highlands provinces has been released. Manning said the release of one female Papua New Guinean captive is a positive outcome. And negotiations will continue for the safe release of the two remaining two female Papua New Guineans and the male New Zealand citizen. Commissioner Manning said from the information received, the remaining three captives are in reasonable health, through, though are being held in difficult terrain. Manning said they will continue to work to strengthen lines of communication, which remains a challenging aspect of this operation. MTV News will continue to follow up and keep you updated on this developing story. Meanwhile, negotiations are still continuing for the release of the three remaining hostages to be freed from the abductions. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Wednesday, the 22nd of February, 2023. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.